scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Lord, thank thank you. you. Bless our hearts, O oh God, and let your spirit rest mightily upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. And so when we sing and when we express ourselves in the spirit, it is because it is the protocol that builds the atmosphere for the manifested presence of God to find expression in our midst colossians chapter 4 please we'll start from colossians chapter 4. will it be projected okay no problem that's all right that's all right we'll just walk colossians chapter 4. now we're discussing the subject of ministry and this is a very very serious task in fact let me start this way um pastor i believe that there are three calls or three appointments that i consider the noblest here on earth and i'll start from the third number three the third most noble call or appointment a man can have on earth is the privilege to be a monarch because it is not subject to any political sentiment and the validity of your your stay on that throne under normal circumstances for the rest of your life the second is the privilege to be a parent this is the second most noble appointment given by god when you are a parent you don't build products you build people you bring another life and grant that life an opportunity to find expression. Nothing has the ability to kill your potential of being a parent. Not lack, not want. All of those support systems only help your efficiency. They are not the basis. But the third and the most noble of all appointments is the privilege to represent His Majesty on this side of his kingdom greater than being a, a monarch greater than the privilege of parenting is the honor to be the bearer of the council the name of the lord and th this is this is something that most people and sincerely preachers may trivialize oh i'm a man of god and i know that that term has been abused so much that it doesn't even make sense again but it is an honor beyond imagination to be the representative of the parliament of heaven hallelujah colossians chapter 4 i hope i'm clear the, vo the volume is that fine okay colossians chapter 4 please and we'll read verse 17 this is apostle paul um carrying out his apostolic ministry as usual and he says say unto archippus Take heed 
to the ministry which thou has received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. He's talking to Archippus. Oh, bless the Lord. If I can have, okay, beautiful. If this is King James, that will be fine. He said, say unto Archippus, take heed. Take heed means pay attention. Take heed means be sensitive to the ministry that thou has obtained in the Lord. He says that thou fulfill it. Praise the Lord. The call to ministry is a very noble one. And I believe that in these last days, again and again, there are many people, pastor, that will have the opportunity and the privilege of serving the purposes of God um, in ministry as we know. But then, my, my teaching this afternoon, the brief session, is to be able to focus on our efficiency in ministry. It is one thing to know and acknowledge the call of God upon your life, but it's another thing to be guided to understand the systems that will help a man to be efficient from God's standpoint and then from the standpoint of your impact. It takes more than a sincere heart and a willing heart to be efficient. Hallelujah. Say unto Archippus, take heed of the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. The first thing I want to say is that ministry has nothing to do with the pulpit necessarily. Um, I think it's very important. It looks simple. It should be basic. It's something you would think we should understand. But it is amazing that most people have the idea of ministry as a man who stands behind the pulpit and ministers to a congregation of people who are focusing on him. No, not at all. The pulpit only became a necessary tool as a channel to help ministry become effective. If a man's ministry will only depend on the pulpit, then it means that ministry is not effective. Are we blessed? The essence of ministry in its, in its most basic form, I'm trying to be as simple as possible, ministry has to do with kingdom service the service of his majesty any effort and contribution geared towards kingdom come any effort and contribution geared towards the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same is ministry so in the most basic form and idea ministry has to do with the service and any effort that comes as a contribution please understand this we have to get these concepts right ministry has nothing to do with holding a mic necessarily any contribution that supports the revelation of the christ and the glorification of the same is called ministry that means if the womb of a woman can be available to birth a prophet the act of that pregnancy is called ministry are we together now that means if the money of a man can support the advancement of the kingdom that giving is called ministry if the voice of a man becomes a tool to communicate the counsel of God and to disciple and mentor nations to the end that the purposes of God be understood. That act of communication is called ministry. So ministry is called ministry not by the channels but by the motivation and the goal. It is the motivation and the goal that makes anything ministry, not the activity. An activity can be religious but it is not ministry from God's standpoint anything qualifies to be ministry when the motivation behind that activity and the goal the end product of that activity is the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same it is called thy kingdom come that is the agenda so it's important are we together now this is very important as as little as this introduction is this is deliverance from confusion as to you know when people say what am i called to do this revelation already begins to give you a bearing because our
because it's usually the activity so when we say i want me to do ministry what what we really are thinking is i want to be involved in the activity that that is closest to religion are we blessed any effort any contribution any participation that is motivated by a genuine love for god and a desire to see his kingdom come to the end that jesus be revealed and jesus be glorified is called ministry so a minister is the name given to one who has sustained that ability first his love for god his desire to see the kingdom come ministry that means that the activity is not really where the credence come from it is the motivation and the end of it this is very powerful because we live in a context today that has defined certain activities to represent ministry and once you are not involved in those activities it becomes very difficult for you to believe that you are ministering this is the reason why there are many people who have forced themselves into we're going to deal with that shortly into activities that they were not graced for and the reason is because there has been an age-long um, communication that for you to do ministry, you must find a way of searching for a pulpit that is available and is in front of you. And you must find a way of gathering a crowd that pledge their loyalty to you and agree that you'll be head over them. If you go through that laborious process, they clap for you and say you are in ministry unfortunately both the agenda of god and the times that we live in is changing this narrative are we blessed amen so ministry has to do with your motivation and the end result any contribution any and every scriptural means deployed to see to it that his kingdom comes to see to it that the Christ is revealed and the Christ is glorified. Whatever that contribution is qualifies to be called ministry. Hallelujah. So it is possible that a woman's whole ministry and assignment will be to get pregnant and give birth to three children. Because those three children can be the prophets for the next for the generation concern and you will be surprised that the entire dealings of that woman with the holy spirit would be for her to make sure she marries the right man gets pregnant at the right those children oh mary if you had failed in your assignment you would not know that you were the, it was more than a baby oh joseph for farimathea to know that god prospered you only because a time would come that your influence and your wealth will bring down the body of the Christ from the cross. That is ministry. Oh, Simon Irene, to know that the energy that was given to you and the health was so that you will help to carry the cross of he that now becomes sin on his way to Golgotha. Ministry. Hallelujah. It is important because you know, Pastor, many people continue to feel guilty and sincerely, even some type of the authentic revelation of ministry into the convention, uh, especially when the title of a pastor, apostle, prophet, or anyone is behind your name. That title creates a pressure. Hallelujah. So ministry has nothing necessarily to do with a church setting. A pastor standing in front of people a congregation listening no ministry has to do with the revelation and the glorification of the Christ and any contribution towards kingdom come to that end is called ministry praise the name of the Lord and it is 
it is in the culture of God as revealed from scripture that whatever task or assignment he mandates man to carry out he takes responsibility for the preparation of that never send we see this in the life of the patriarchs we also see this as he prepared the disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb he took responsibility for the mentorship and the preparation to the point that even when he did not finish the training curriculum sir when he resurrected you thought he would have the time to celebrate he came back and said guys gather we still have uh, there's there's 50 more days before the holy ghost comes and there are some things you need to know before his arrival and the bible says he camped with them for a period of 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom there were certain things they couldn't have understood but now the resurrected and the glorified christ had to come and tidy up that part of the lecture and now he left them and they were ready to receive the holy spirit hallelujah so preparation for ministry is very important it's very important to be prepared for ministry and there are certain things for this session very quickly uh, there are so many things to be honest with you when you are dealing with the subject of ministry is something that should take weeks any point at all including this definition can take us weeks to explore so i, I want you to please um um make do and, and and apologize for the summary and you know the way it sometimes it's difficult to compress these things in a way that um because they need to be elaborate for people to really understand but god will grant us grace in jesus name there are three keys here that i've written and i'll just touch on them briefly as far as preparation for ministry is concerned it is a noble thing to be in ministry and especially the five or fourfold whatever perspective you hold as it may be in as much as we have said that ministry has to do with any effort to kingdom service i i permit my bias in this dealing i would want to focus on the ministry gifts ephesians chapter 4 the ministry gifts so that i think that that's where the emphasis will come the, the lesson would be relevant to every other dimension but let's focus a bit on the five or four fold you know the body of christ has so many divides on many thoughts and um it's not my intention to create a law court here this afternoon so um we'll try to work with the narrative that fits all but the bible tells us that when he descended to hades the place of the dead he was attempting to describe everything that happened around redemption the bible says that he led captivity captive he says and then he says he gave gifts to men and we understand that the, he gave men to men those gifts are men then the bible says he gave unto some apostles some prophets some evangelists and then some pastors and teachers and that's where we get the idea you know of fourfold or fivefold but then it says that the purpose of these people is to equip or perfect or mature the saints so the gifts have an assignment to mature the ministers you see the gifts mature and throw the bible says by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men so the gifts were sent by god to prepare the body of christ for what we call kingdom service or ministry and for that to happen there are certain things that must be known and and i'm grateful for you know programs like this because it helps to remind us sometimes we can be very negligent in these things and the the methods may look very old school and we may not subscribe to them but these are very ancient patterns and they are patterns that are guarded by the very jealousy of god and there are landmarks you do not interrupt you 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 leave them the way they have been pegged because it is a formula hallelujah number one the first key when you want to prepare for ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on your life and your relationship with god let me repeat the first key that makes you effective in ministry is to temporarily take your mind off ministry as we know mainstream ministry preaching teaching conferences healings deliverances anointing impartation trips protocol worship leaders 
all of these things are wonderful but they only find value when our relationship with god is in place so the first key to ministry is to focus on your life and your relationship with god it is the first key and should remain the first in that order everything fails in ministry when your life and your relationship with god is in trouble it's amazing that when the devil comes to destroy you he doesn't attack the ministry he attacks you because he knows that it is the shepherd that really controls what happens around there are we blessed your life and your relationship with god we need encounters listen the truth is that there are dimensions of ministry that are challenging. It will require an encounter to sustain your stamina. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. And, and encounters are the spiritual system that create convictions in believers. So we have several people who fall by the wayside. The reason is because they did the same brings conviction was not exodus chapter 3 must be sent to be a deliverer and to bring the nation of israel out of egypt and please give it to us exodus chapter 3 verse 1 let's just rush the bible gives us a a little story on how god began to deal with the flood to the backside of the mountain and came to the mount of god even to horeb Go ahead the bible says moses watch this moses has the destiny of a deliverer he's about to confront his half brother ramesses to advocate the exodus of the nation of israel from egypt but for that to happen was taught the egyptian um, um astrology and all these kinds of the activities of witchcraft and now god was about to prepare this man and the first thing god did was to create a scene that would distract him away from every other activity a bush that was burning but was not consumed and he continued to flash it and moses said i will turn aside and see this great sight and then the bible says when god saw that he turned aside to see he said moses take off your shoes your shoes is a representation of your ideology and your experience your work so far do not add me to the many gods in egypt and think i am number 1001 take off your shoes take off that experience i'm about to introduce something new you are about to introduce yahweh the god of heaven unless you confuse me with ra and the gods of fertility the gods of agriculture i am not one of them take off your shoes when God meets you, he does not continue from where you took yourself. You must go back and start afresh with him. Even if you have been in ministry for 30 years, when you encounter God, he will act like you never started ministry. You have to go back and follow his patterns afresh. Sometimes you can be a celebrity or you can be a successful person in the secular sector. And when you come into ministry, chances are that you will borrow your achievements from the secular and hope that God will just move you with it. Unfortunately, in the dealings of God, before he begins to do business with you, you must take off your shoes. The fortitude to come back to become like a child and begin your training with his majesty. So this is what happened to Moses. And then, listen, he now told him about his assignment. He said i'm sending you um let's go to verse seven you know paraphrasing now i'm trying to hurry up i'm sending you to egypt and all of that i've seen the affliction of my people i've heard their cry from their taskmasters for i know their sorrows verse eight and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and so on and so forth verse nine now therefore it says i have seen the oppression of the egyptians verse 10 that's what i'm looking for it says i will send you to pharaoh now hold on notice two things that god tells any man he uses the first thing is come then the second is go just because god said come does not mean ministry has started come is the name given to the process that initiates your training your dealing your building 
then when you are made come follow me he said when i make you then i send you you can hear the voice of god i agree but what did he say he said moses come now therefore and then i will send you you will think he just meant come let me talk to you and send you uh -uh. come now can be 10 years come now can be two years come now can be a journey in the cave of adulam that prunes you and brings you to a point of stature and power in the spirit come now and i will send you to pharaoh and when i prepare you i will equip you in a way and a manner that you will bring forth my people out of israel out of egypt verse 11 now moses said unto god who am i that i should go to pharaoh and that i should bring forth the children of israel out of egypt 12. he said certainly i will be with you and so on and so forth this shall be the token unto you now when you read on notice something that he said moses asked two questions number one who am i you need to tell me something about myself that gives me the audacity to stand before pharaoh question two who are you so tell me who i am but who will i tell pharaoh had sent me pharaoh is a stubborn man pharaoh is a wizard pharaoh is a system of rebellion who will i tell pharaoh had sent me and god said you are asking a beautiful question now you are calling for a revelation of me the part of God you meet is the part of God that you will deliver to the people. He says you are crying for the dimension of me that will strengthen you to stand before Pharaoh. And he said, I am that I am. He had not answered his question yet. I am that I am. Moses, check your archives of the names of the gods of Egypt. Have you found a God with a name like that? Listen, names are representations of dimensions of specialty. When you call somebody um, a, a consultant, this and that, you are attempting to describe his area of specialty. And the gods of Egypt were not all function gods. The gods were humble enough to admit that my specialty is weather. My specialty is fertility. So when Moses said, who are you? He meant what dimension, what space do you occupy among the gods? And God was saying, you are asking a question that is a revelation of your ignorance. I am that I am. Here you meet the one who is the creator. Here you meet the one who only fragments himself to help men, but is not limited. I am that I am. He says, now go and tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. Let me tell you this. On your way to fulfilling the purposes of God, Pharaoh will ask you who sent you. When he says who sent you, you will have to draw from the archives of your dealing. The encounter that brought your confidence. Our generation, respectfully speaking, is not a generation of convictions. No. Our level of conviction and our depth of persuasion is very small. At every challenge, at every disappointment, at everything, we chicken away and we now begin to communicate epistles and speakings that reveal our weaknesses. So forget about the conferences. Forget about the imagery of yourself traveling on suit to minister in a stadium. I congratulate you, it will come. But you better know you are being sent first to Pharaoh before the people. The man resisting the people is called Pharaoh. Your relationship with God. Genesis chapter 28. Let's rush. The first requirement for ministry is your own life. Your relationship with God. Jacob. Until Jacob had his encounter with God, we never knew that God could be called the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob was an award that Jacob earned for himself by reason of his insistence to know God. 
notice that certain people encountered God to the point that God named himself as after them in honor for their depth of pursuit even Moses God is never called the God of Moses it's called the God of Abraham the God of Isaac now Isaac did his own Abraham did his own the God of Abraham does not behave like the God of Isaac uh -uh. his operation is different he is still the God of heaven now Jacob is about to create a testimony for generations to come and let's watch his drama in chapter 28 um i'll just rush and then we'll go to 32. the bible says how that he came to a place called loss and then he found out that there was a stone there is, is that true then the bible says that he dropped that stone and laid to sleep and then he saw a portal that connected the heavens and the earth and he saw angels ascending and descending and at the top of it was god himself and he began to speak to him and Jacob got up from that experience and he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I did not know. He said, this must be the gate of God. I mean, the, 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 the gate of heaven. Are we together now? And then Jacob did not appreciate that encounter. He was not transformed by it. The next thing that will happen from chapter 28 to 32 was the experience in Laban's house. There are times that God may not cause certain things, but you may be too innocent to see the necessity for an encounter. So God will allow you to go through certain things that will create a need. A need for his presence. A need for his power. It was the experience and the frustration that came from Laban's house that made him appreciate the second encounter in chapter 32. Please give to us 32 Genesis. I trust that God is blessing us. For time's sake, let's start from verse 22. Genesis 32 and verse 22. Shalaprakoski abadaka. Hallelujah. The Bible says he rose up that night. Watch this. He took his two wives, drove them away. He took his, his women servants, drove them away. His 11 sons, he drove them away. And he passed over to Fort Jabok. And he took them and sent them over to the brook. And over all that he had, he sent everyone away. The Bible says when he was left alone. There are dimensions of God that are not revealed corporately. You must use your 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 desire to encounter that dimension you must prove it by creating the atmosphere when he was alone then the bible says there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of jacob's thigh was out of joint and he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day break it and he said i will not let thee go except thou bless me just keep that there we will learn from here how god blesses people he blesses people by doing something to their name oh lord thy god how excellent when god wants to bless you he excels your name please understand this how excellent is your name and i will make your name great abraham so when god wants to bless people he does something to their name but this is not what i'm teaching about now so jacob is having an encounter with the god of heavens and he he now held on to him and began to cry and he said leave me for the day break it and he said i will not leave you now watch this you never the strength of God cannot rest upon strength. The strength of God looks for weakness. So when the strength of God comes to you and finds strength, it will go back and wait until the time there is a factor in your life that is, is weak enough to need him. Lest you confuse his strength and your own in the future. So Jacob was complete on his, on, on his own. And it was difficult for God to do business with him. So God said, I will have to touch something in you that creates a permanent deficiency without me so that it will become a memorial. Every time you limp, you will realize that I am your completion. Let it be the issue of life and death. This is why sometimes God will painfully ask certain people to resign from your job. And it doesn't make sense. He's saying, look, 
I'm not necessarily saying that is a template, but it's a unique dealing to you. There is something I want to teach you about Jehovah Jireh so that you don't go and preach nonsense. And so to teach you that I need an experience with your own life. And he touched Jacob. And Jacob was now limping. God, you have destabilize my structure for life i will never be normal again you have brought me to a point where everybody who sees me will now know i am weak and god says it is an honor not a shame for people to know that you are weak because in your weakness that is when the strength and the power of god comes so when when he deals with you in a way that there is a permanent destabilization of your structure when men see you they can know the difference between you and the grace on you they know that this level of result cannot come from a man by his intellect are we blessed this afternoon and then he says what is your name let's finish up and he said jacob he says thou shalt no longer be called jacob 27 now 28 he says but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and with men and you have prevailed 29 he says where are we yes he blessed him there 30 and the bible says jacob called the name of the place peniel it means the face of god he said for i have seen god face to face and my life is spared now watch this this encounter was so powerful that by the time we get to psalm 24 the bible says the earth is the lord's and his fullness thereof it says the walls and they that dwell therein it says for he has founded it upon the water he has established it upon the sea right he now says who shall ascend he's talking about stamina who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place he says he that has a clean heart and a poor heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully as a result he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation then he says this is the generation of them that seek you in the similitude of jacob Jacob now earned a name for himself to represent encounter. That means when you want to encounter God, God's authorized referral is Jacob. Understudy Jacob and learn how men find God. That seek thy face, O Jacob. It is important that our relationship with God be built on truth, be built on conviction. I will never trade anything in ministry for my relationship with God. No, no. Time consistently with God. There is no man who has a gift of consistency. You create it through passion and hunger. God must find a way of engracing you it's amazing and and the thing about ministry is because of the grace that can come upon a man it is possible that you can be out of touch with god for even a year and it will only take discernment to know as far as delivery is concerned you will continue being accurate and flawless lord bring us to the place where we hunger for you more than pulpits we hunger for you more than stage lights. We hunger for you more than Rema, Greek and Hebrew. Bring us to the place, oh God, where our hunger, our, our depth of passion. This has been my drive to this generation. More than preaching, you will never exhaust the dimensions of revelations that you will find in the body of Christ now. You will, if it is miracles, the prophetic, the revelatory grace, let me tell you, there is it in abundance. You will continue to find an unfolding of it. But God is crying for men. Men who desire his face more than the mic. Men who desire his face more than a chance to speak. Oh, I love him sincerely and I love him more than ministry, more than titles. Hallelujah.
if I stop here, it is, it is, it is a good message that the secret to ministry is not really the obsession just about administration and organization it is powerful there is a place for that but they only find their credence when your relationship with god is in place jesus i know paul i know who are you the bible says in that day some will say we healed in your name some will say we did we casted out devils in your name he never said you are liars he said depart from me ye workers of iniquity iniquity is not sin iniquity is a perpetual continual state of rebellion against the ways and the counsel of, of, of god please we must this is a call that the body of christ returns to the place of passion and genuine intimacy genuine intimacy Turn everywhere in your house into an altar of worship, an altar of encounter. Whether it is your bathroom, whether it is your bedroom. I always tell people you have a garage for your car. You have a place for jewelries. But you must find a place for him. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. Take my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Prune my everything. Break my everything. Rebuild my everything. Lift my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, you have my everything. You have my everything. Let it be a song of worship. You have my everything. Hey, you have my everything. Take my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me. Listen, the price for all of God is all of you. Not your heart, not your offering, not even your morning devotion, not your prayer life, not your Bible study. The price for all of God is all of you. Say, Ram in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And this life that I now live in the flesh that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God is calling on a generation. God is calling on preachers. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, men and women of God, prophets, apostles, God is calling us to return to the place of encounter, more than a place of sermons, more than a place of prayer meetings. Listen carefully. I do not downplay these things, but everything you give your generation will be an overflow of your encounter, an overflow of your secret place. He says, such as I have, I keep such as i have i give such as i've seen i reveal such as i know i deliver if you have not seen the burning bush do not stand before pharaoh it is risky your relationship with god please sit down let me just touch on the next very quickly we can spend all night just digging this 
because this in my opinion and as simple as this message is is really the key lose everything in your life pastor when you have your relationship with god intact the life-giving factor in your life is still in place job lost everything lost his influence lost his children lost his estates and his possession lost his health but job said though he slay me yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time he said i will wait hallelujah i believe that a major part of a minister's life should be behind the veil everything that is powerful everything that is glorious is hidden when god hides a thing he reveals the excellency and the worth of that thing so when your life is excessively exposed as a minister is a sign that life is cheapening your grace and cheapening you not from a human perspective above the mercy seat below the shadow peoples there i will meet with you there is a location where men find god his manifested presence is not every his omnipresence is everywhere where can i hide from your presence but there is a dimension of his presence for intimacy there must be an atmosphere created by hunger and passion hallelujah number two the second key to efficiency in ministry is your message your message when you are preparing for ministry it is important that you understand not just the message your message to understand your message you have to understand the message I wish I had time I would have shown you a very interesting story in 2nd Samuel chapter 18 you may just write it and go and read it 2nd Samuel chapter 18 the Bible talks about this was the death of Absalom and then the Bible talks about two men who were instructed by Joab one of them paraphrasing huh? one of them please give us maybe from verse uh, oh dear Lord let's see from verse 24 or so the Bible talks about um, Absalom that when they had killed him they sent a word to David and one of them wanted to run away second Samuel chapter 18 from verse 24 18 from verse 24 and then the Bible says one of them Joab he wanted to rush to the king to take tidings and joab told him no 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 absalom is dead uh, there is no message for the king now i will send another person and yet he insisted insisted and said i want to go and the bible says he ran david sat between the gates were reading and the watchmen went up the roof and they lift and he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man running alone read on next verse and the watchman cried and told the king and the king said if he be alone then there is tiding in his mouth this is david now and he came apace and drew near 26 and the watchman saw another man running so two men were running and the watchman called unto the porter and said behold another man running alone and the king said he also brings tidings so two men are running to the king let's see what happens and the watchman said me thinketh the running of the foremost is like the running of ahimas ahimas was not sent by joab but he wanted to go and meet the king he wanted to do ministry no message but he just wanted to arrive at the place the son of zadok and the king said he's a good man he cometh with good tidings 28 please and ahimas called and said to the king all is well look at the message he brought to the king and he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said bless me the lord thy god which had delivered up the men that lifted up their hands against my lord the king 29 interesting and the king said is the young man absalom safe and Hagimas answered when joab sent the king's servant and me thy servant i saw a great tumult but i knew not what it was can you imagine that a man was running running to the king and when he arrived the king said what is the message and he said honestly 
I'm not sure I, I really understand what brought me here. Now watch what happens to him. This will always be the lot of those who do not stay to understand their message. The king said to him, turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. There is an explanation to irrelevance in ministry. It is that you have not stayed with God to get a message that is for a generation and for a context of the dealings of God. And you will shadow box and run around. You may also hold conferences respectfully. You may do several things and wonder why a generation is not listening to you. Because there is a message. Ahim has run. Let's see the next verse. Let's just finish up. And then behold, Cushi came and Cushi said, Tidings, my Lord the King, for the Lord had avenged it this day, all this and that. And when you read on later, he was crying for the death of Absalom. But the point is that Joab sent Cushi and Cushi stayed to understand the message before he ran. It's important to stay with God until you understand the message. Moses said, I'm not going anywhere. Give me details. What am I going to tell Pharaoh? And he said, when you get to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. That was a message. God only backs what he sent you to say. Mm. It is important. Please, let's understand this. Now, very quickly, oh dear. There are three dimensions of understanding your message. Number one is the great commission. This is a message to every servant of God. The great commission. Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Represents what we know to be the great commission. That he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So watch this. The assignment is go ye. The location is all the world. The job description is preach the gospel. The object of the sermon is every creature, not men. That means the true gospel should affect everything God created, not just men. If your gospel only affects men, it is not powerful enough. Hidden in the true gospel is the ability to reveal Christ to both animate and inanimate things. That is what makes him truly Lord of all. Are we blessed? Preach the gospel to every creature. The account of Matthew says to disciple nations. Disciple nations. That means mentor people. Create spiritual patterns. Mentor disciple nation. Hallelujah. So, the great commission represents the general call for everyone who bears the name of the Lord. But, your message will also come number two from your dealings with god acts chapter 26 when you read the whole book of acts 26 it was please give it to us we'll turn there shortly paul was standing before king agrippa and making defense of the gospel and paul began to preach and talk about his how that he persecuted the church as a pharisee he obtained letter and it was out of that that experience that he had an encounter so you can get your message from your dealings with God there are people who go through things and in the midst of everything they are going through the message that represents their contribution to the revelation of the Christ is revealed our experiences are not a waste hidden in our experience is a message to our generation in fact in all fairness one of the the ways that you are truly qualified by god to minister to people is that you must have passed through an experience that compels you to be touched with the feelings of the people you are being sent to it is difficult to be effective for instance in the healing ministry if you do not have a history in your life of having passed through a process that required you to provoke the Rafa dimension of God. Do you know compassion is sponsored by um, the ability to draw from the history of your experience. There are times you stand before a sick body and you exhaust all the scriptures and you look at this condition, you know 
and suddenly God draws from the archives of your things. Remember that at seven years old, they said you were about to die. And then Rafa came to you. And from that compassion, the power of God is supplied to your spirit. And a miracle happens there. Do not waste your experiences. There is a message. Archive them. They will be used tomorrow to sponsor compassion. Beware of people who are too innocent to bless others. There is a level, there is a track record in your life that must be able to pull out compassion. It will not make sense why they are feeding the poor and the hungry if you have never been hungry. So the Bible says we do not have a high priest who has been touched. Kabarus Kadiata. The requirement to be a high priest is not your regalia. It's the ability to be touched with the feelings. There are times you pass through an experience that crystallizes the name of God in your life and that becomes your message. These things like, like Dr. Luke began to write to Theophilus. He told him that the things that are most surely believed among us every assembly and every congregation must have the things that are most surely believed the foundation of the conviction of that ministry a healing ministry that is struggling to understand that god heals is in error because that should be among the things that are most surely believed number three still on your message you can get your message by a direct instruction from God. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Please let's rush. Please give it to us. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. The young boy Jeremiah having an encounter with God and receiving a direct speaking from the mouth of the Lord as to his assignment. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Uh -huh. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and authorized ordination is a system of authorization i legitimize your operation in this space of the earth as a prophet and the jurisdiction of your prophetic influence is to the nations i wish i had time because one of the things that will ah, oh dear the the mystery of spiritual jurisdiction to understand that just because a man is called and anointed and generically the great commission is to the whole world it does not mean you'll be effective everywhere for every anointing has a measure of jurisdiction for its efficiency when god wants to honor you he does three things one he increases your influence number two he measures a thousand cubits and expands your reach in the spirit even jesus had to take people out of certain cities to certain cities to bless them when he sent them he said Oh, do not go everywhere. Go to the lost tribe of Israel. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 26. Please let's look at verse 15 to 18. Paul is making defense of the gospel before King Agrippa. King Agrippa. Acts 26, 15 to 18. And he said, who am I? He's, he's reiterating his encounter now. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. We're reading to verse 18. He said, but rise and stand up on thy feet. For I have... No, please go back to 17. 17. 16, I meant to say. Yeah, 16. Thank you. For I have appeared unto thee for what? This purpose. To make thee a... Please help me. To make thee a... So ministers are made ministers are made through their experience with god my experience with you has made you a minister and a witness both of these things that thou has seen and of the things which i will appear unto you next verse delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send you 18 to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light are you seeing why the spirit of revelation came so lavishly upon paul it came in honor to this assignment because there is the grace that makes all men see 
when Paul began to mentor the church in Ephesus under the influence of this goddess called Diana Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 don't turn there he began to give the basis for his apostleship he says so that when you read my epistles you will understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other dispensations he said was not given to them but in this dispensation that God has made it available to the ministry of his holy apostles and that mystery is to make all men see there is a grace that makes men see talking is not what makes men see oratory is not what makes men see there is a grace that vetoes the intellectual deficiencies in people and ensures that they understand the precepts of God through your lips it's a grace that makes all men see but it came through encounters it is important that we understand not just the great commission but to understand our contribution everybody cannot do the same thing your grace comes in honor to your message when satan fights you he will fight your message that's what he's after he's not necessarily after you he's after your message the seed is the word and when the word was planted satan did not look for the farmer he has always looked for the soil and the seed read the bible there are a few times when he was interested in the farmer his assignment was the seed and the soil the jurisdictions of his oppression his obsession is to do something about the seed and to do something about the soil hallelujah praise the lord so your message must be clear i'm summarizing and I'm, I'm so sorry i feel so bad because there is a lot to be done but please understand that your message must be clear if you are or a robot your assignment is to take the healing power of jesus to the nations this morning a great grand, grand patriarch of faith maurice rulo went to be with the lord in glory we honor and celebrate him for what he represented he had a similar assignment with what god has given you sir and he began to mentor nations right from i think the 70s or the 80s he would organize schools of ministries transcontinentally and begin to mentor people maybe millions of ministries have come out from that mentorship hallelujah yes it is important that people understand their message there are dimensions i thank god for the privilege of trusting me with the spirit of revelation but the grace is not even though it's an apostolic office there are things you may never hear me teach about it is not necessarily because i do not know about them but i do not know enough to have the apostolic audacity to mentor the body and i must love the body more than my ego to remain in the boundary that is assigned to me you see sometimes stepping into boundaries that our level of grace does not provide accommodation for is where error comes a fish will only always look stupid if it tries to fly because it is outside of its jurisdiction are we together I think this is this is an instructive warning especially for my generation of ministers it's important the pressure to want to say everything and teach everything no believers should mature from the synergy of all the whole counsel of God but it does not have to come through you you must have the unashamedness to understand you are only an effective member in the body and to stay within your spiritual jurisdiction while communicating honor to other dimensions that are not you so that with that it is possible that the body of Christ comes into the full counsel of God but it does not have to pass through you there are people who carry dimensions you can imagine people like T.D. Jakes now the, the, the virus and the lockdown has brought glory and stars to his ministry you see that because he is uniquely the, the apostolic expression of god's grace upon his life thrives in conflict and thrives in darkness and so while this is almost swallowing a lot of people i mean he's riding on that storm with honor because there is a grace that is upon him let me give us the last to tie up this session the first i said is your life your relationship with god 
the second is your message the clarity and the detail your message determines who should listen to you and your message determines who would partner with you not just financially lifting your hand it is very important number three the third key when you're preparing for an effective ministry is understand your pattern understand your pattern patterns are divine strategies for effective execution exodus 25 and verse 40 please god is a god of patterns you must understand the pattern given to you patterns are very very important even when your message may be the same your patterns are very different and you must understand your divine strategy for effective execution of your assignment exodus 25 and verse 40 he told moses building the tabernacle he says and look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown thee on the mount i can tell you many people sincerely have missed it because they have gotten their passion right with god they have gotten the message but they may not have stayed enough to understand the patterns there is a dimension of the dealing of god called personalized dealing there is a dimension of god called doctrinal dealing god deals with men according to the precepts of doctrine it is applicable to everybody but there are personalized dealings the unique dealing of god that is custom built for where he's sending you it is dangerous to turn that unique dealing into a doctrine I have taught it again and again God can look at me as a person because of my personality and my background and weigh me and say Apostle Simon because of what I think you can do and cannot do do not have more than three cars it is a pattern that was described for only me in God's wisdom he has seen that three cars will be the best for my efficiency that anything outside that it may affect me now when I take my personalized dealings because of the results that follow from obedience and now teach it as a doctrine that when you have more than three cars you are in error you see I'm deceiving a generation we must be able to separate between our personalized dealings especially in mentorship because those who mentor our lives if we are not careful to be able to guide them to tell them look this part of my life is not a general rule for everybody this part of my life came as a result of a unique expression of god's working in my life so when you get to this junction ask god like me what template is he subscribing for you if god has called me into the prophetic ministry it is a joke if you play if you pray only one hour no in the apostolic and the prophetic there must be a heavy investment of prayer to build your spirit but when god calls someone to be a businessman it is true that he will pray but he will never be able to stand in that stamina carrying the spirit of prayer and supplication to that degree and subscribing my pattern to him as proof that he's making progress is a deception because he will try and struggle you see it is important that we are careful so that while mentoring people we do not open up patterns that our our, our unique dealings with god there are people that god can give unique instructions don't have more than two children i have looked at your life and i have seen that if you have more than two children it can affect the kind of ministry i'm giving you but for another person he may not have that prohibition because there is no doctrine like that in the bible that creates prohibition now sincerely sometimes while we mentor people we may be able to spill over there are times paul writes and says i write as a man that means look you can if if god tells you otherwise honor him um paul there are times he writes from the standpoint of his apostolic office as touching the grace upon his life but there were times that he communicated his opinion 
we must be careful to let people know which part of our dealing is God's personalized dealing to us and what part of our dealing is doctrine generally speaking believers are mentored by the doctrine of scripture our experiences are only supposed to support doctrines not to become a doctrine on its own are we blessed yes so the individual biases in terms of our mode of operation in church in terms of the way we communicate in terms of the way we relate with god there are unique expressions to those things and they are profitable however they may not be profitable for every call and every dimension of ministry but the doctrine of scripture will build us and give us stature and balance then it can now be supported by our experience it's dangerous to create a doctrine out of an experience if i was sick one time and i refused to go to the hospital i fasted for three days and suddenly god showed up in a way if i make a doctrine out of that only god will tell the number of people who will die it is better to advocate the compassion of god including the hospital as being as an expression of his compassion then i can now tell you that look in my dealing with god i found out that there is still an opportunity that you can rise beyond that limitation however this is the doctrine of scripture that you stand upon error will be minimized in the body when we focus on the doctrinal character of god more than the individual expression to us because our interpretation of those experiences matter i can have a vision say in 2000 imagine my spiritual growth and my life at that time and then understand the vision in 2025 but from 2000 till 2025 i will be teaching what i think is the interpretation of that vision and mentor people after that error then now have an encounter later on and god corrects me but those people have gone with that error i may not be able to call them back and say hey i made a mistake for 10 years and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation are we blessed divine patterns God will always have a unique way of working with you mark 16 15 let me round up please please give it to us there are ways that God works with me pastor there are ways I can know what anointing is in a place now it's going to be difficult for me to teach that as a doctrine let me tell you this there is what I call please keep that scripture there there is what I call personalized dealings when you are in the cave of Adulam being trained by God, there are many ways based on the unique expression of your call. You find out, for instance, for several people, once their hand starts shaking and they feel a lot of heat in the hand, God teaches them that to mean the healing anointing. You cannot generalize it. To someone else, it may mean something else. So just writing a book and saying heat on your hand means the healing anointing. You will corrupt the training of another person. Are we together now for william branham he had an expression of the prophetic that was so powerful unfortunately many videos don't capture it but william branham will stand in a meeting with thousands of people and refuse to move because there was an angel that god gave him an assurance with that would always come and signify the revelations so he would stand there sometimes for a long time and the people are bored and tired and angry because it was the pattern God gave him. He would stand, but later on you hear him say, now the angel has come. And suddenly he begins to prophesy. Or a robot, the pattern given to him was he would lay hands. He would not speak like Benny Hinn. And then those who are healed come out. No, even if there are 5,000 people, he would lay hands on them. Patterns. You notice, for instance, that he's playing the instrument for me is a pattern that was given there are people this is a distraction based on the pattern given to them they don't want to hear any sound whatsoever now it's a pattern are you getting what i'm saying now yes when benny Hinn is preaching you see these cameramen and the rest he will drive them away the, he wants to see prayer warriors 
and deeply spiritual people it is not enough to have a message you must study your patterns ensure that you build but you build according to the pattern not the pattern available the pattern shown you the pattern shown you there are people the power of god is only released in their life when they begin to pray they can say let's pray and when you begin to pray 5 10 15 minutes suddenly they begin to minister there are others they will worship for a long time there are others nothing will happen at all they can just break the sermon and begin to preach it's a pattern it is important that while we are trusting god to help us in ministry we stay to learn the pattern that is connected to our graces our graces are activated by the patterns that are given you can be in ministry and never maximize the grace of god given to you because you have not studied the pattern different vehicles are switched on in different ways there are others you push a button there are others you turn a key there are others you still do a lot of things the most important thing is for the vehicle to be on but there are there are patterns when you drive a golf and when you drive a truck there are dynamics in the operation when you bend at the same area you will capsize that truck there are times you will have to shift away from the area you want to go and then you turn well because of the size of the truck but for a golf you can even miss the road and then turn again just just an, 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 an analogy we borrow a lot of patterns that do not connect to our graces and we find out that our lives and our results continue to make people question whether we are called or not hallelujah so while we receive mentorship from people and while we provide mentorship to many people we must be able to stay with the holy spirit to separate between doctrines and patterns these and many more are some of the pathways that prepare us for effective ministry let us pray just two prayer points very quickly we're going to talk to the Lord father restore my fire and my hunger for you more than a desire to advance the local assembly committed to me more than a desire to do ministry as we know please I like us to pray just two three minutes but don't here I am in your presence do to me what you want I'm open before you Lord do to me what you want this is the place of surrender do to me what you this is the place of encounter search my heart oh god i desire a genuine relationship with you that is greater than that is greater than prophesying that is greater than signs and wonders greater than administration and growth and excellence and all of these things i desire a genuine hunger hallelujah prayer point number two you're going to cry to the god of heaven clarify my message i'm tired of being an evangelist today and a prophet tomorrow just following what i think sells there are people today who continue to vacillate across the fivefold. They are sincere people, but they've not been able to get clarity. Clarity of message. What is your message? Your message determines who you are sent to. Your message determines who listens to you. You may not be sent to everybody. Lord, what is my message? 
a representation of my years of dealings with you a representation of the prophecy that is upon my life it says this charge i give unto you timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been spoken upon you please lift your voice and pray lord clarity clarity strengthen my message let it be loud let it be clear let it be unmistakable take me away from vacillations grant me the grace to stay to abide in my area of call teaching the truths that have been communicated to me my contribution to kingdom come last prayer point you're going to cry lord realign me back to the pattern the pattern that activates your grace and your workings in my life listen this is where many people miss it they keep telling you i have a dream i know i'm a prophet i have a dream i know i'm a worshiper i have a dream i know i'm an apostle borrowing patterns randomly will only frustrate you your grace only glows when the patterns connected to your grace see every time the glory of god comes the glory of god comes validates that his patterns have been honored when they built the tabernacle according to pattern the bible says then the shekinah of god came when solomon built the temple according to pattern the glory of the lord came when the glory of god is upon the life of a man it comes in honor to the fact that divine patterns have been kept last prayer point cry for a revelation of the patterns given to you your pastor is walking in keeping with the patterns given to him especially this year patterns patterns are not what is popular patterns are not what people within your ministerial circle are doing no a divinely revealed dimension a strategy for executing your assignment a strategy for effective execution Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.